I noticed they have no sort of compunction about stories regarding a wide variety of housing situations for a wide variety of politicians. But if you step on PLM's toes, this thing gets shut down. Only certain types of misinformation are being shut down by the social media bros. The latest evidence of this is that Twitter has now banned James O'Keefe. Why? What did, what did James O'Keefe do? Well, his Project Veritas has been releasing tape of CNN directors talking about the bias at CNN. Twitter claimed without evidence, according to the Daily Wire, that O'Keefe was, quote, violating the Twitter rules on platform manipulation and spam. According to Twitter, as outlined in our policy on platform manipulation and spam, you can't mislead others on Twitter by operating fake accounts, and you can't artificially amplify or disrupt conversations through the use of multiple accounts. O'Keefe immediately said that this is a lie. He called their statement accusing him of operating fake accounts false. He said, I am suing Twitter for defamation. Donald Trump Jr. responded to Twitter's latest crackdown by saying, in case you haven't figured out how it works by now, CNN spreads propaganda to elect Democrats, and then Twitter runs interference to protect CNN. They're all on the same team. You remember that not all that long ago, the claim was that James O'Keefe's material couldn't be put online because it was some sort of hacked material, because it was undercover material. The same sort of nonsense that they trotted out there to explain why they were suppressing the Hunter Biden story in the month leading up to the election. The idea there was this was hacked material. We can't allow hacked material, which is weird since you allowed tons and tons of hacked material throughout the Trump administration and tons and tons of leaky material throughout the Trump administration. Again, the real story with James O'Keefe is that O'Keefe got CNN producers and directors to admit on tape that they basically biased their media coverage in order to oust Trump. But according to Twitter, the bad guy here is James O'Keefe, obviously. And it's not just the O'Keefe story that is now being suppressed. Facebook, apparently, is now blocking users from sharing another New York Post story. What exactly is this New York Post story? Well, the New York Post reported, as we talked about on the show, that Patrice Con Cullors, who is one of the Black Lives Matter co-founders, has now purchased a new $1.4 million home in a super white area of California. According to Mediaite, the stories about Con Cullors, a 37-year-old self-described Marxist who spent $3.4 million on homes last year and another $1.4 million in March, began in the Post on April 10th, with the first one titled, Marxist BLM Leader Buys $1.4 Million Home in Ritzy, LA Enclave. The Daily Mail picked it up. Black Enterprise did so two days later with a call from New York City BLM Chief Hawk Newsom calling for an investigation into where exactly this money was coming from. When exactly did the media decide to crack down on this? As soon as Jason Whitlock started sharing the story, Twitter decided to suspend Whitlock for tweeting out the story. Facebook is now banning you from sharing the New York Post story in the first place in the same way that they banned you from sharing the Hunter Biden story, which is insane. Here is Facebook's explanation for why they actually blocked the story. Quote, the articles shared multiple details which could identify the residents of one of BLM founders in violation of her privacy rights. As for our community standards, we do not allow people to post information or personal or confidential information about yourself or of others. We remove content that shares, offers, or solicits personally identifiable information or other private information that could lead to physical or financial harm, including financial, residential, and medical information, as well as private information obtained from illegal sources. We also provide ways, we also provide people ways to report imagery they believe to be in violation of their privacy rights. Okay, so... All they did in this original story was they shared a picture of the house. They didn't give the exact location. This sort of reporting is done literally all the time, all the time. In fact, right now online, you can find pictures of the house of the Minneapolis officer who's just brought up on manslaughter charges. You can find pictures on real estate sites of the house that I just sold in California. It is not difficult to find stories with regard to what people's houses look like, particularly if they are celebrities and if they are political celebrities. So this is just a lie. They're suppressing the story because they don't like the contents of the story. This has very this has nothing to do with the specific methodology of the story. They didn't give out her address. They didn't say go harass her. Nothing like that. They just printed a story which is extremely newsworthy that the Marxist founder of a Marxist organization who suggests that America is deeply enthralled to white supremacy, just bought a gigantically expensive house in a super duper white area of California. That's a story. Not only is that a story, that's a story with public interest. Not only is it a story of public interest, it doesn't threaten her in any way. It does undercut a lot of her claims. If she's so scared of white people, if she believes that white supremacy is really an institutional problem that is, that is putting black people in serious danger, why in the hell is she moving to an area with like three black people? She tripled the black population of Topanga Canyon simply by moving there with members of her family. Okay, but, but it undercuts that. It undercuts the idea that she's an actual Marxist. She's not. Or maybe she is. She's just like Stalin was a Marxist, right? And Stalin also had a nice Dasha. Everybody else was living in abject poverty or being slaughtered in Ukraine, but he was living in a really, really nice area. 
Turns out this is the way Marxists often work. They get to live in the really nice house. You're the one who has to suffer. Nicolas Maduro has a really, really nice house in Venezuela. So I guess she's just taking a page from the normal sort of Marxist playbook, which is those at the top of the echelon, they get to have the really nice houses. Everybody else has to be a Marxist. In any case, Patrice Cullors went on air with Mark Lamont Hill to try and explain why she'd been investing, you know, $5 million apparently over the course of the last year and a half in real estate. Pretty non-Marxist stuff there. The, the way that I live my life is a direct support to Black people, including my Black family members, uh, first and foremost. And uh, for so many Black folks who are able to invest um, in themselves and their community, they choose to invest in their family. And that's what I've chosen to do. Um, I have a child. I have a brother that has severe mental illness that I take care of. Um, I support my mother, um, and I support many other family members of mine. And so I see um, uh, my money as not my own. I see it as um, my family's money as well. Oh, my God. Okay, so so she's just a capitalist. She's just a capitalist. And not only is she a capitalist, she doesn't believe that America is a deeply white supremacist place where white people are routinely targeting black people. Because if she did, she wouldn't be moving out to the out to the boonies. She's moving into. I mean, that's Topanga Canyon is like a very rich area of L.A. I lived in L.A. for 30 years. Topanga Canyon is not an impoverished area of L.A. It is not a heavily minority area of L.A. I love that it's OK for her to use millions of uh, millions of dollars that were taken in via Black Lives Matter to supposedly fight the systems of white supremacy. And she proceeded to spill that money into all the systems of white supremacy. Why? in order to protect her family. Weird, because you know what? I have the same exact view about my money. My money is not just my money. It is my family's money. It is not your money, Patrice Cullors. It is not the money of Black Lives Matter. It is not the money of the federal government. It is my money, and it is my money and my family's money. And I earn money so that I can help my family. I have exactly the same view that she does about helping my family, which is why I move to a safer area. It's why I move to a better area. And every single American should have the same exact right and viewpoint about their money and their family's money as Patrice Cullors. It just demonstrates what a damned hypocrite she is. She and her organization go around talking about how evil America's systems of capitalism are. Tear down the family. Weird, because here you are talking about how you are the support system for your family. But I thought that the family was a patriarchal, terrible structure, which was on the BLM website until five seconds ago. I was told that Marxism was the solution to the problem. But here you are talking about your money and your family's money. I noticed you didn't say the people's money. I noticed you didn't say that, Patrice Cullors. But don't worry. It's an embarrassing story, and the media will step in to protect Patrice Cullors. The, the social media bosses will step in to protect Patrice Cullors. I, I notice they have no sort of compunction about printing stories regarding a wide variety of housing situations for a wide variety of politicians. But if you step on PLM's toes, this thing gets shut down. The, your establishment media, your social media bosses, they are corrupt. And by the way, if, you're, if you believe that this is all about suppressing misinformation, again, there's a difference between disinformation and misinformation. Social media bosses should not be in the process, should not be involved in suppressing quote-unquote misinformation because sometimes what they perceive to be misinformation is actually correct. Disinformation is active propaganda on behalf of a foreign power. The, you'll notice that over the past few years, there's been this subtle shift from disinformation to misinformation in the way that the media talk about information spread online. They went from disinformation is bad, true, because it is foreign propaganda, to misinformation is bad, which is anything we don't like is misinformation and we will shut it down. But I've noticed that only certain types of misinformation are being shut down by the social media bros. How's this for a title? Ben Shapiro Show subscriber destroys like button with clicks and logic. I'd watch that. Make it happen, gang.